This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. In this episode, we're going to have a look at creating a static site. And we're going to use a Tailwind template, and we're also going to build a blog around it. And so there's a lot of different static sites out there, and they're all pretty good. However, the one that we're going to use in this episode is one called Middleman. And the thing that I really like about it is that it's very bare bones. There's a lot of other ones out there that you can use, which are just as good. But from all of them that I've tried so far, I did find this one to be the easiest to work with. However, there are going to be some challenges that we're going to face because we are going to be using Tailwind CSS. And really, the challenges are how are we going to provide a seamless development experience for the blog? And so I think I found my preferred approach to this, and it is actually very much aligned with how you would do a Rails application. And so some of this may look familiar if you're doing a Rails 7 application with ES Build. And so to get started, we will run the gem install middleman, and we'll let that gem install. And if we scroll down on the website, you'll see that it says that we can run the middleman in it, and then the project name. However, because we know that we are going to be making a blog, I want to run the middleman in it. I'll then give it a project name. I'll just call this the template. However, then I want to pass in the template and we want to set this equal to a blog. This will do a lot of the initial setup for the blog and doing this after the fact is actually going to be a much bigger pain because you'll get a lot of conflicts that you need to overwrite. However, if you've already started making changes in those areas, then you're going to have to figure out what changes you want to keep and which ones you need to get rid of. So if you know your static site is going to include a blog, then you want to pass in that template option for the blog when you initialize this project. 